Hello, I'm Walt Bartman, and I'm the founder and director of the Ella Barn Studio. I've been uh, here at Glen Echo for uh, over 30 years, and uh, we have a studio here that's uh, in a national park, and we have uh, where we offer over 80 classes a week, and we have 35 instructors. So it's a pretty big program. And each year we have our, our member show, and uh, it's a, a big deal. I mean, we have a lot of interest, and we have a lot of outstanding work submitted. And each year I have to find a really great judge. And this year I found Ingrid Christensen. Hi, Ingrid. How are you? Hi, good, Walt. It's great to have you. And I know that Ingrid is not nearby. She, she's just turned up the heat in her studio. Uh, she's out in Calgary, uh, Canada. All right. So just so you know. And, um, you know, it's it's great to have you. And, and uh, maybe if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I, I uh, started as a school teacher. I taught art and English, but really I should have just gone straight into art. And, and for those of you with kids who want to be artists, don't say, oh, be a teacher. You can always do art on the side. So, because it never works, you get back to art. So then I became a, a potter and a metalsmith and eventually found my way to painting. I started in watercolors. And then when I wanted to go bigger and get rid of glass framing, I I turned to oils and that's pretty much what I've been doing for the last 15 years or so is just exploring oils, loving every every minute in the studio and uh, and learning every day. Well, you know, when I the, the reason that I've chosen you, this is why. All right. First of all, uh, like this term, I the, one of the things I was working with my students was when's the painting finished? All right. And you're the kind of artist that's sort of like the Bauhaus, where you don't put a roof on a building. You can put another layer of building on top of that and another layer on top of that. As soon as you put that triangular roof on, that's the end of the building. All right. Yes. And so when I look at your work, one of the things that inspires me is that it has that feeling of being able to be continued. So I really find that to be a really strength of your work. But the other part of it is... Uh, is is your color and i think that the um, interesting thing about that is the way you work with patterns of color and uh and i admire that and i i really felt that um you know what i know of you you're, you're more of a figurative artist if i'm not mistaken and yes. i the the uh so you might be able to speak to these three things what what can you say about your your finished paintings and your uh color and your uh you know, the, the your choices of, of things like uh, we just talked about, all right? Um, well, color color is, is absolutely uh, at the forefront for me. Color and form. So I'm really interested in creating form. I, I started by looking at books on the Impressionists and then I found the Russian Impressionists who really spoke to, to me probably because my landscape that I see every day is very similar. The light is very similar to what they depicted in their paintings. Um, and just a strong focus on color, but also a focus on form, especially in the Russian Impressionists, impressionist, not so much in the French Impressionists. And, you know, like, how do you create form without becoming Rembrandt-y? And that never really touched my soul to look at those sorts of earthy, paintings, but um, to see painters who could create a sense of solidity just by uh, sticking in the mid values and making subtle shifts in temperature and tiny shifts in value as opposed to great big shifts in value. That was that was that when I discovered that it was like a whole new language and it felt right for me to to go down that pathway. So and as well, you know, I, I I could explore something that I love very much, which is a lot of color. I live in a place that actually for most of the year has very little. And maybe that's why, you know, give me color. And it's like, oh, good. <laughs> you know, I can't wait for I can't wait for flowers and things to come out in the spring. I have to create that in my studio to get me through the long winter. So uh, and figurative work. Why figurative work? Um, because it was a default. You know, I looked at what I was seeing in the in the galleries, uh, predominantly in, ca in Canada, what you see is going to be landscape. And it 
never really touched me as much as when I would find one little figurative work tucked away in the corner of a gallery. It's like, oh, look, look, there's a person. So I guess I'm a real people watcher. And it just made perfect sense for me to be depicting people. The interesting thing is it's a lot of it is, I know you do portraits, but uh, a lot of the figurative work is multiple figures. All right. Sometimes, and, yeah. Uh, and, it, and it seems to be like uh, Degas where uh, the, the figures are doing something. They don't seem to be just posing. So yes. What, what's your references? What do you usually do? You, do you work from life? Do you work from photos? What do you What do you normally? Well, for anybody moving, and certainly I've done a lot of um, children, you know, children in water and that sort of thing. It's all photos, but um, but I feel like the only way I could become good at painting people from anything really from photos is by doing a lot of life painting. So I started by doing um, a number of years just from life. And that, that meant, you know, sometimes a model, but that's expensive and so mostly still life. So I spent probably the first two, three, four years strictly working from life. And that gave me an idea of how to create form using color. Um, you just can't get that from two dimensional things. And still I, I go to life painting, which is such a blessing to be able to go and see a person in real three dimensions and see how to turn a cheek, you know, because you've got a full volume cheek right there and you can really see how the light travels across it and where it drops off and um, pick out colors that the photo just won't show you. So I take everything that I learned from life and I apply it to photos which give me uh, the, the gesture, you know, if, if a child was running, I can get that gesture and then I can take all the life work and figure out how to create their their limbs, for example. Yeah, I think that, the, the you know, that's one of the strengths of your work. The other one that I want to touch on is the unfinished part that seems okay. like you could continue working on that. You're, you're not, I don't think you see yourself as the descriptive painter. You see yourself much more as a suggestive painter, all right? Very much. And so- yeah. Very what, much because I, I believe that I believe that we don't see the world the way the camera does. And the camera gives us such crisp definition and completeness of every single shape and element in that, you know, like you can see the children as clearly as you can see that breaker in the back on, on the ocean. And so you can see the boat and all of this stuff is all crisp and clear. But the way that humans perceive the world is that most of it is soft. You know, I, I read a book once that was about how how our brain sees, how it transmits, how it takes the information that our, our eyes give it and turns it into a fully rounded image. But um, really, they, the book said, if you hold your thumb out at full extension and you look at the size of your thumbnail, that's as much of the visual field is in focus at any given time. And it really struck me as is so true that you know our brains are saying that we understand everything in the room that we can know what's there but really what i'm seeing you know i look at you and i see you in focus but even the edges of the, your picture frame on zoom those are soft and as it goes out from there it gets softer and softer and so i think when i started painting anything that looked very crisp and defined didn't seem to me to be um, an honest depiction of how I saw the world. And I always think that that's what I'm painting is how I see the world, the amount of color, um, the focus on color and temperature rather than on extreme value changes is just a, a really trying to be an honest, honest description of how I perceive my, my world. So. Yeah. And that's, this is what I wanted everyone to understand. You know, when I pick a judge, I need someone who really can speak about their work, understand, you know, and speak about it in a way that I think is very clear and, uh, you know, and and truthfully produce strong work. So I think our our uh, people are uh, members who had to have their work judged by someone. Uh, we've got a good good judge. For it. <laughs> Thanks, Walt. So I think that that's that's where I'm coming from. All well, right, it was fun. Yeah. So this is it. So we're. I know everybody's waiting now to see what the uh, what you picked and why yeah. you picked it and things like that that work. So, but we're gonna uh, essentially share the screen, all right? And uh, first of all, just to show people the Yellow Barn, all right? I believe we're seeing the Yellow Barn website, right? At this point? There we are, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, this is the Yellow Barn. So for anyone who doesn't know anything about the Yellow Barn, we're in Glen Echo, Maryland. And uh, as we said, uh, you know, our uh, Ingrid is in uh, Calgary, okay, Canada. So the world is really close. And I think that the, you can see that, uh, that we offer shows and, uh, you know, offer classes. And like I said, we offer um, 80 classes a week. So with 35 outstanding instructors. So this is our webpage. And if you're interested, you can go to the yellowbarnstudio.com and see our webpage. Okay. So that's that. And the next thing I want to do, Ingrid, is go to the work. And we're going to okay. share the screen again. And we're going to start with um, this particular. Um, uh, you should be seeing. You're not. Which one are you seeing right now? I'm seeing um, the donuts, but I don't think I'm seeing the full image. Feels okay. like the bottom's cut off. Right now, are, are you seeing? Right now is perfect. Okay, so uh, the um, uh, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and go through them. I okay. think I'm just going to click through the work that was submitted so that everyone can kind of see what exactly uh, the challenge that you had it in, in front of you. And truthfully, we had a, about 100, close to 160 pieces submitted and right. you choose 80. So right. I think that, uh, if anything, that is was a real uh, competitive uh, number. All right. Yeah, and, it was hard. Can I just ask, are we going to be seeing all 150 or are we seeing the 80 uh, that were selected? We're going to see the, um, uh, I believe these are the 80. Okay, perfect. This is, a, this is the 80, I think, I'm hoping. All right. Yeah. So uh, these are the uh, pieces that we know are in the show right now. Yes, exactly. So that must be the selections. Good. Yeah, this is the selection. Okay. So let's go back to the donuts and we can okay, so you're, talk uh, about them. All right. We'll run back to the donuts and you can make any comments you want from uh, sure. on any of these these pieces. All right. Sure. We're going to set um, the main comments for the winners. So I think right. that's what we want to do. Right. So, okay. yeah, well, let's just, I'll just speak really quickly to each one of the 80 uh, to let people know why I, why I picked those, the ones that I did. Um, generally, I was looking to create a, a show that represented different mediums, you know, to have drawing and, um, and watercolor and oil and acrylic in the show to have abstraction and realism as well. Um, and to have different genres. So still life, landscape, figurative. Um, and, and also there were some, some cityscapes, which was nice for me to see. So, uh, you know, looking at this piece, and of course, I'm, I'm also looking at competence and confidence in the work. I'm looking for people that look like they've, they've got a concept for their painting and have successfully carried that concept to fruition. They haven't, you know, kind of tried to include everything so that it becomes a painting about everything. It's a painting about something specific. And so here, uh, what appealed to me was just the the abundance and knowing the scale of it, it's, it's very large as well. So it's an abundance of sweets and juiciness and the paint quality looks very juicy as well. So, um, so it appealed to me because of that. It was, it's colorful, it's unexpected, and, uh, and that's what drew me to this piece. Okay, and then this piece? Which I, I love flowers, and I thought this was a beautifully delicate, elegant, almost um, Japanese woodblock kind of simplicity to it. And so, yeah, I thought it was just a, a really delicate way to draw our attention to something that, you know, we see in the stores all the time this kind of this time of year, we see the Christmas cactus and we just kind of walk past them and this artist said, no, look again. And that's what I enjoy about it. And it is beautifully done. Okay. And this is another case where the artist said, look again, uh, still life is something really close to my heart and to see someone take something so simple and mundane and and find the individuality in these repeated little um, shells I thought was was beautiful. And I'm always drawn to figurative so um, to see a, a sensitive portrait and and I liked the quirkiness of the closed eyes there's there's a very nice mood 
to this and um, a, just a beautifully done portrait, very compelling. Um, I liked this very much. I, I liked the real limited uh, palette that the artist used. I liked the amount of information, which, you know, frequently we say, well, it shouldn't have too many shapes. And this has loads of shapes, but it's really an honest depiction of what you see when you go out in the winter landscape. You see a ton of bare branches and, and trunks and, you know, um, breaks in the snow where the creek runs through and, and rocks and all of that stuff. And the artist put that in because it was the complexity of the landscape that appealed to the artist next to the simplicity of that house. And I think it worked out really well. I thought this was just a really strong, simple portrait, deceptively simple. And the, the gaze of the sitter is, is very compelling. It's very intense. And I like that really powerful triangular shape to the composition. So, you know, while it's, a, it's, it's apparently simple. There's a lot going on, including things like that subtle thing that you notice around his hair, where it's lighter around the top of the head, almost a subtle haloing. So there's a lot going on. I thought it was a very nice portrait. This one, this one really caught my attention because it made me think of Vuillard with his um, kind of ambiguous space. I've seen a few of his landscapes in life and sometimes you can't tell where the patterning you know is that patterning that's happening in the background is it in the foreground he really compressed his space and turned it into pattern and so this one um, caught my eye right away and then you know this is the opposite of what i was talking about with that snow scene this is very really uh simplified landscape where the artist has seen complexity but has painted simplicity and that's hard to do. So I admired um, the sense of depth, the very clear and confident shape making. And one of the things that really appealed to me was tracking purple through the whole landscape from the shrub in the foreground to that purple field to the background mountains. It just is a very satisfying composition. And I, I like this very much because it's absolutely um, an honest and um, loving depiction of a garden in the summer. And to see the way the artist has said, no, I'm not gonna skimp on all of the colors that I see. I'm not gonna mask them and turn them into just a piece of red, a piece of whatever. I'm going to show you that they are individual flowers and put those marks in without in in watercolor without it getting muddy that's no simple task so i thought this was a very confident watercolor and i i like this very much again the artist has imposed a really clear vision on it and has jettisoned anything that doesn't um, conform to the concept of sunset and intense uh, warmth of the sun. And I like the, the way that the artist has composed horizontals, but not boring horizontals. There's also a vertical coming in through the, um, in the sky. There's a, a sense of a vertical, uh, pardon me, a diagonal. And then those vertical elements, the sail and the other um, verticals in the background, probably also masts. So I just think it's a really nicely composed piece with a very harmonious palette. This one, this one just appeals. It's so, it's so funny. You look at it and you, and you immediately smile. And um, I think the artist has really captured an, a time of life and the thing that um, used to make us just so, so excited when we were kids was our water wings and our wading pool and, you know, the goofy little goggles, it's all there. And it, it really is a piece that will make whoever buys it smile all the time. This one, this one was quite interesting for me to choose because it's, it's completely outside of my experience as a painter. It's not something that I do this level of abstraction and simplification of the figure. But I, um, I loved the sense of 
it, it's called connection. And I love the sense of the closeness of those two individuals, um, though they have no, no features. You can feel that, you know, perhaps it's a mother and a child because one head is significantly smaller than the other, but there's something very um, loving in this piece. This one, um, I, I just loved the, the landscape depicted and I thought, uh, you know, what a great place to be. <laughs> Some paintings you just want to live in and this one I would love to live in. I'd love to go back into that through the, the framing of those trees in the foreground and back to the water and just uh, wade in it because the artist has really caught light and warmth and um, invited me into the space with her composition. And this one is, is a very um, confident, you know, hyper-realistic piece. It's, uh, it's, it's an amazing amount of, it's an amazing piece of craftsmanship. And um, I kind of liked the, the sort of dynamic composition of the piece as well. This one kept me coming back. It's almost like a, um, it's called quirky green. It's almost like a, like barcodes or QR codes and quilting at the same time. And there's something rhythmic and kind of satisfying about moving your way through tracking pieces of color as you go through. Um, it's, it is a, it is what I'm looking for in work. It's an uncompromising individual vision that is confidently um, executed. So nicely done. And I like this because it's very suggestive. It's, um, you know, it's called Cityscape. I would have known that without seeing the title, but it's not, uh, it, it is at a level of suggestion that really appeals to me where you, you make me think of buildings, but you don't put windows and door frames and, and all of that stuff in. So it's, it's um, nicely done. This is just a beautiful piece. I don't know if it's um, if it's plein air, but it it's extremely confident and has um, strong shapes and interesting varied shapes. It's a, a lovely landscape. And this one, this one, I just really liked the the sort of strange view you know you feel almost vertigo looking down at that lake and um, the artist has really played with perspective and perception in this and made some very strong very very unusual shapes i like this because of um, the amount of the, the coherence of the palette and then the amount of texture and revisiting. I love to revisit my own paintings and put more and more on them. And I, I feel like this artist has that sort of uh, willingness to keep going back and adding more things to make it richer. I thought this was just a beautiful atmospheric um, watercolor, really, really powerful, nicely done. It's not an easy medium. I've been there, it's hard. <laughs> And this um, is just a really, really strong, well-observed uh, still life. And I like how the artist has tackled different textures and different levels of, of um, opacity and translucence and transparency. So it's, it was no, no mean feat to do this. Congratulations. What I like about this is um, the, the subtlety in moving value through this piece. So you can, you can see that the artist has really carefully graduated the value from the, the, the extreme lightness of the porch light out along the fence. It gets just, uh, you know, she's, he or she, 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 sorry. She has noticed that there are different levels of warmth and different values as you move away from that light and then balancing it with the, the light of the moon as well. It just feels like a very satisfying, really thoughtful composition. I like the, the, the life in this. The, it feels like it was done from life. It feels immediate and um, it's got 
energy. And I, I think that the artist has really observed carefully to do this piece. This one I really enjoyed because it's, um, I liked the shape making very much. Uh, I, you know, I feel like it's a really coherent series of varied shapes. And I like the, the, the little piece of yellow up in the, you know, what I perceive of as sky. I'm not sure if it's meant to be landscape. I'm feeling like it's a landscape and it's suggesting all sorts of things to me. So I can look at this and I, it gets my brain working, which I really like. I like this because it feels so immediate. It feels like the artist was in that scene painting what she saw and um, has captured the complexity of painting in a garden. And I like the fact that, you know, there's a, there's a person in the background as a focal point, but there's all this patterning and color and life and, and um, light and dark around that person. This one has a, a beautiful, calm, quiet mood. Uh, it has an unexpected element for me, which was taking, which took it a little bit beyond just, um, you know, a girl with a cat. And that unexpectedness is the rhythm of the plant leaves and how that leaf on the left leads us and sort of arcs gently into the figures. And those arcs are repeated. I think it's, uh, it was an interesting choice to leave that leaf in and it really elevated the piece. I like this um, because it's such an interesting process. It's figurative, which I always enjoy. Um, but also it's, it's, you're noticing not only a face, but you're noticing a process at the same time. And I think it's, it's a, you know, not an easy one, this process. It was a nice surprise. I like the, um, what I liked about this was, again, watercolor is, is no easy medium and the artist has done something interesting with such a tricky medium and given us both softness and, and hard edged and some drawing up in the, in the trees in the background. So there's so much going on here and it's very much um, a place that I could, again, feel like I would walk, want to walk into. It's got great light. I like this because it's, uh, because it's still life, which is something that's very close to my heart. And I think it's really nicely observed still life. And I particularly like the way the artist has dealt with the shapes around those, those squash and pumpkin. Um, so if you look at the, the drape and those, those leaf shapes um, around, they, they really have thought about um, shape making and value and the repetition of that upright in the major pumpkin is repeated again in the, the blue drape as you work your way over. So I think um, just a, a beautifully composed, complete still life. I like this very much. It's got such a great mood. I, I always enjoy um, when people look at family. This has the feel of a family photo it's called generations and they turn it into something contemporary into a, a, a piece of art and it's um it's just got a really nice mood i love the color in this this one really touches me and i i could see that one it's um i think it's 10 by 20 i could see that one huge on a wall because it's really dynamic and it's got great big strong confident shape making This one is, is just beautifully observed and uh, yeah, I, and it's quirky. It's a quirky composition to put that much space for um, the, the rail tracks. And I, I think that's what attracted me to it was that it was unexpected. I, I would love to see this in life because I, I bet it's got a really rich surface but I, I can get a sense of it. I could get a sense of this during jurying that it's just built up of translucent layer upon layer. And um, some of it is obscured and there's a real sense of depth with the way the artist built this. I thought that was very saucy. <laughs> Again, it's got a, it's got a sense of a, 
a special photo that has been turned into something um, that you could put on your wall, something that goes beyond the photographic. This one really, really caught my eye. I really enjoy this um, because it's so uncompromising. It's, it's uh, an artist with a very clear concept who has not has not um, tried to you know give us too much information it's all about those glasses and those those firm lips and the kind of uh confrontational in your face look to this and it's it's fairly large too so i bet that looks great on a wall this is really beautiful and poetic and i love how we see the the repetition of those sinuous um, curvy marks in both the curvy shapes in both the flowers and their leaves. It's really strong, very dramatic. I like this um, again because it's a bit unexpected to have that expanse of field. I like that the artist chose not to make the you know the what is sort of our horizon line at the edge of the field where the the buildings start has chosen not to make it. Um, absolutely horizontal. I think that really was a good call to make it on a slight diagonal. And then we've got that gentle diagonal interplay throughout the whole piece and it's got great light. This one is, I think, really powerful. It, it says a lot with, uh, with texture and a very limited palette. It says a lot about rock and um, harsh landscape really nicely done i liked um knowing that this was a, a lino block and marker piece i like that that the artist started with lino block or maybe started with the markers i'm not sure but um mixed multiple processes in this to create a coherent single image this one uh is really a strong piece of of high realism i th i think it's uh, it's probably really tricky to create that translucent ribbon that's almost transparent ribbon that, that runs around the front of it and then you've got the opaque ribbon you've got a sense of satiny finish as well as um uh you know more matte finish on the stripes that lead up to it so it's there's a lot going on there very successfully done i think this is very much like the landscape that I see around me and it's so beautifully described as a series of seesawing movements and that pathway that leads you back in space it's got great depth and it just uh, it really evokes a place. I liked how, how unusual this was it's um, it's a, a building site sort of feel all scaffolding and and angles and hard edges and it goes right across the the canvas from edge to edge and yet there's something to look at in every part of it and i think you could really you know become you could, i bet in life you could spend a lot of time just exploring the little nooks and crannies of it this is a very strong and um feels feels kind of plein air like I, I don't think it is at that scale but there's something very monumental about the the depiction of that cathedral which you know the subject matches the the um, execution very really well i like this because again it's it's using something that is so hard to use watercolor and keeping it all clean and, and and that sounds so simple minded keeping it all clean but i mean that's really hard to do in watercolor to get color variation without getting mushy sort of mucky stuff i like the the brush marks in this and the use of some scraffito it's a it's a nice strong painting and this is exactly what i see outside my door every day and it, it strikes me as an extremely honest depiction of a time of year and i like the complexity of it it just feels like an intimate view of a winter backyard this one i found really intriguing and um and a really powerful use of color temperature the generally cool painting with those really hot 
um, moments in it in the buildings in particular, but even in the, the sort of cooler yellows around it, I think it's a really organized and, and complete concept. I liked this um, for its, its, again, very suggestive, a suggestive almost atmosphere well very atmospheric feel nothing is clearly defined a few of the heads have been picked out with a little more strength there are a lot of lost edges and softness and i appreciate the the thought that went into choosing how the viewer's eye should move through the piece i thought this was a, a lovely uh, representation of of light and the the complexity of flowers in light. And this piece is charcoal, which is um, another really tricky medium. And I think the artist is, is very confident and strong in using this really tonal medium. I like this. It's, um, it's quirky, two figures in dark blue, you know, walking towards us. I like that I can see that one figure has turned to the other because of the, the orientation of the baseball cap. And I, I just, um, I don't know, I found something really um, appealing about what is being suggested here about a relationship and about nature. What I liked about this one was the um, I, the strange sort of angle that, you know, it is quite close cropped. So it really fills the whole, the boat really fills the entire canvas. And then the, the artist had the confidence, which is, which took a lot of confidence to put that sort of complexity behind the complexity of the masts and the, and the rigging to put that complex sky behind it. And I think it really works. It's, it surprised me by how much this works. This is uh, just a lovely, quiet piece with the artist's intention very clear, which is all about the negative space and the, the um, individuality of all of those trunks and branches. I like the observation in it. I liked this for um, the color. And it could, you know, when you see a lot of color, it can look unfocused, but the artist has given us focus in that central sort of off to the left area where where the person has given us greater uh, chroma. So I think it's a, a nicely organized, abundant piece. This one I thought was just so beautifully executed. It's, it's something that we can all relate to. It's got a real sense of joy in it and connection. And I, I really admire the, um, the restricted palette because it makes it a very coherent image. And I thought this was quite a sensitive, uh, figurative piece, a, a great depiction of light on the figure and not overly um, descriptive, more of a, a sense of a mood. This one, this one is quite beautiful because it's just moving from realism into something more abstract, a bit more um, suggestive. I love the, the, the leaves in the background where you can see that they're, they're really not descriptive leaves, but they've got that nice swirly sort of organic movement to them. There's a lot of movement in this piece overall. And this one I just thought was incredibly um, bold and fun and uh, evocative of almost an era. Like I'm feeling something playful and I don't know why the word 50s keeps coming into my head, but it feels like, you know, a, a landscape from a, a scene out of a movie in the 50s. There's something really joyful and innocent and um, exuberant about it. I thought this was really well executed. It's, uh, it's got a lot of processes that I admire. And I do find myself exploring the entirety of the picture plane, which is wonderful that the artist has led my eye around with so much variety. 
I like this very much because um, it's it this person sees the world in a way that I can relate to, you know, as as simplified, gestural, um, colorful, and people, as you mentioned earlier, people are doing things. And so for me, it feels like I'm in a bar watching watching musicians. I thought this was a had a really sweet feel to it. It's a, a very loving portrait. And this one just is is powerful. I looked at the scale, it's 23 by 23. And I imagine that on the wall and I can imagine that it's really compelling to see those beautiful eyes just lasering out at you. I thought I thought this was um, a little bit gruesome and, a, and an, an amazing piece of workmanship. You know, the, the cat presenting the token to somebody feeling quite proud of itself. So it's, it's, um, it's got some tension because of what's being depicted and it's really well done. I liked the simplicity of this with the sense of um, complexity, which I bet in life, the, the paint surface has a lot of depth. It looks like it was built up in many layers and it's, uh, it's got some really strong shape making. This one is um, looks like plein air. I don't know if it is plein air, but it, it just is nicely observed. It's a, it's a moment and the artist has shown us what really drew her eye and, and done it really strongly with those beautiful, strong colors. And I, I enjoyed this very much because it's hard to do florals and I think this artist has done a really good job of it, given us some variety across all of those pinks and reds and um, given us some, you know, some something that keeps our eyes moving throughout. I think it's well done. This one is is interesting. It's um, it's got a little bit of a quirkiness to it. It's almost, um, you know, it's almost a, a distortion to the, the, the cars. And so it's got a, a little bit of a tip tilted feel to the world and it's, it's, it's quite dynamic. I thought these cows were just um, beautifully done in terms of the, the color that moved across their white fur. And it's got a great sense of light as well. And again, this is another kind of a quirky perspective painting I like moving along that really colorful street to get to the scooter at the end. It's, it's like a, a view of vacation, you know, walking through a, an Italian street and seeing things, colors on buildings and, and scooters and things that you don't see in North America. <laughs> and I thought this was a very um, dynamic image, the way everything comes together in a point and then blasts out in rays from there. I liked the, the shards of, of color, the, the very coherent palette as well. I thought this, this had just a beautiful palette. I'm all drawn, I'm always all about color and this uh, color really appealed to me. And this is uh, just a lovely slice of rural life to see all of those mailboxes. And it's, it's wonderful when people capture something so, um, so honestly. Okay, we're now gonna to go to the award winners. Okay. Yeah, you had, your, um, you had uh, your hands full here. I mean, this was a challenge and you'd really- It was enormous, oh my gosh. <laughs> the number of times I cycled through all of these going, Maybe, 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 and I go back again. It, it took a while. It was fun. What I, what I like about the, your choices, uh, I mean, it, every one of the reasons uh, really made sense, all right? Oh, I'm glad. And truthfully, I, I mean, it speaks well of you to be able to verbalize, um, you know, your thoughts about the work. And this really helps. It helps everybody who's uh, submitted work to the show, you know, to see and have these kinds of comments. I mean, usually that's not the norm. So I really want to thank you for yeah. that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead now and go to the um, 
to the to the award winners. Okay, perfect. Uh, now here are our award winners, and I think uh, Ingrid's going to really give you um, you know her ob observations and her reasons for her for her choices as to what would receive an award. So Ingrid, I'm going to just let you go ahead and get started here. Thank you. Um, I really admired this piece. It's small, but it's such a complete little world. And it made me think of one of my favorite painters, Fairfield Porter, for the simplification of the forms, for the um, luscious use of color, and, and this depiction of daily life. And just, it's, a, it's like a it's like a very artistic snapshot of a very special moment. And, and it's, I thought it was just wonderful. This one, this one is, is a real surprise for me because the more I looked at it, the more I could find at first, I, I, at first I was, you know, I thought nicely done, but the more I looked, it's like, wow, really nicely done. I noticed things like the, um, the movement of color, the subtle movement of color in that background from the, the greener field area in the foreground back to the, the purple at the end and the gradation of color down the building, how every, every square and rectangle within those buildings has been well considered in terms of, is it going to be um, high contrast area or a low contrast area? I loved that little piece of blue in the window, um, sort of one third, one third of the way up from the bottom. So everything about this just felt so intentional and subtle and beautifully composed. And I thought this was um, a really strong figurative painting, just, you know, regardless of what it's telling us in terms of a message, which of course is a, a powerful message, but also just in terms of how the artist has organized those those powerful shapes and has given us a very coherent uh, palette throughout so it works on two levels it's it's telling us something very powerful but it is also a really well composed painting and i saw this uh i saw the scale of this and i thought i bet that is spectacular in life and i really admire all of the different um surfaces that the artist has handled glass flowers fabrics but what i really was struck by was that uh, background the top maybe 35 40 percent of it that ambiguous sort of geometric recession i think really elevates it beyond a simple still life into something that's a bit more um, surprising to me and it made me think of uh, a painter named raymond staprins staprins S-T-A-P-R-A-N-S, and the shapes in the background made me think of his work, which I love. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I thought this was just a beautiful, um, well-observed piece with patterning, but controlled. It's like controlled chaos. There's so much going on at the and inside um, an arbor of fruit like that, and the artist has has described it without it, without losing control of all of those shapes. And you can see that every leaf has been dealt with as an individual. And you can, you can also see that the, the artist has created a rhythm through those arcing um, tendrils and branches. And so I thought it was just really uh, structurally an amazing piece to orchestrate. This one, I absolutely love the, the confidence of color and the unexpectedness of um, that, that shadow color in the background, which I think for me is just so wonderful. You know, it's a, a pinkish wall. And so I'm not expecting the shadow color to be that, that sort of warm brownie uh, mid-value color. And then just the, the confidence with which the artist has handled each of those flowers. Some of them are just red dots and others have a suggestion of petals. Um, it's, it's just beautifully composed and really confidently painted. And that was, by the way, third, third place. That yeah, one was. was third place. That was uh, Chris Buckman. This one's Raymond Burns. 
Yes, which is second place. Mm -hmm. and, and what an amazing piece of draftsmanship. I, um, I admire the technique and I admire the sense of a limited, coherent palette and a good uh, depiction of light. Okay. And then our winner. Our winner, uh, yeah. yeah. Charlotte Heron. Yeah, which is a really powerful and coherent piece with a, an uncompromising um, concept and execution. The artist has, I mean, that, that is an unusual image and the artist has has stuck with it throughout you know the cloud shapes above that that ice flow are you know they, with their gradation and yet each one of their perimeters is is a different shape the whole thing is incredibly complex and it um it's a it's a coherent world that she has created and i admire the vision well, I want to say, uh, you know, your uh, choices. Let's go back now and just we're going to stop sharing the screen and get back to you and, uh, you know, to say that those, the choices each year when we select uh, our, our juror, we hope that we're going to have a really great show. And you really picked a really super show. So Thank we're you. really happy for what uh, you've done for us. And you know, for the people, I'm gonna just share the screen right now, just so they can see a little bit about the, um, uh, if you look at where I was, we we're already set up for the show this coming uh, this coming week. All right, uh, the, the show is on the weekends, uh, Saturday and Sunday, and this opening is tomorrow, and it'll give you an idea of what we have here. And the place will be full of people, and, uh, you know, it's going to be really exciting for everyone to see uh, your choices. And uh, no one knows at this point, uh, you know, they, they will on Saturday, of course. So I think that's that's where we, we are. But I, I will say this, Ingrid, it's been a pleasure working with you. And uh, truthfully, I um, just admire everything that uh, you, you do with your work and, and also admire what you did with our um our show. I think that uh, if anything, it really worked out well. You are in uh, Calgary and you uh, teach out of the Winslow Arts Center, I believe. I do, yes. Which is in, in uh, Washington. Yes, yeah, so, just uh, off of Seattle are, on Bainbridge Island. Yeah, so that's so it's interesting uh, to have you and to say that we really, really uh, are pleased and happy and truthfully uh, excited to see what how everybody will us come and see the show so thank you again thank and, you very much it's been fun and we'll have uh you know try to keep in touch with you over the over the years all right thank you all again. right all right bye, bye.